Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, the next stitchery piece that I want to add to my uh, journal is one for the inside cover here, which I've prepared earlier the space or the template. So I sort of know my sizing. This piece here that is pinned on the front is um, just ready for whenever I want to do something on the very front of this area. It's torn to size and pretty much ready to go. So I'm just pinning it there so that I don't lose it and it is easily found when needed. And then what I'm working on this time is the inside spread, which gives us more of a longer landscape space to work with. So I've torn a piece of fabric that's suitable now for that and it's on my board here ready to go. And as I mentioned in a previous videos, I've been toying with the idea of doing something with mushrooms. So I turned on the video and I'm going to show you what I've got so far. Now there are so many videos out there. Well, yeah, there's heaps of how to make a mushroom out of fabric. So I sort of just started watching a few of them and a lot of don't give a, a lot of them don't give a lot of detail, but mushrooms are pretty fluid sort of things. They sort of can pretty much look like anything you want them to be. So my idea is to have an array of different styles of mushrooms made out of different fabrics, textiles, and textures, stitching them all down and then embellishing them in the style that we usually do. So the first thing I had to do is start finding different types of mushrooms. And I'll start with these guys here. Um, I'm sure you've seen some previous videos and you know that I crochet. Now I've only learned to crochet in the last few years and I pretty much taught myself from using YouTube videos. So if you did wanna learn crocheting, this is actually a pretty good project to sort of start with. And it's simple, so it's nothing too you know, overwhelming. And I've got so much crocheting threads that are a little finer than what you would use on a blanket because we use them in slow stitch. So I had certainly plenty of um, opportunities to use some of my uh, threads. So I went hunting for a crocheting pattern um, that showed you how to make a mushroom. Now I'm just grabbing my phone because I did some screenshots of the little pattern that I used. Well, I sort of used to some degree. Golden Lucy Crafts. That's the website. She does lots of crocheting. And um, she, that's it there, if you can see, Golden Lucy Crafts. Okay, and she's got these little patterns that you can use, or instructions you can use to make your mushrooms. Now, because I haven't picked up my crocheting hook for a little while, because I was crocheting so many blankets for friends and family that my wrists started to get a little bit sore, a little bit of tendonitis. So I had to just slow down a little bit. So it was really fun to go and find my hook and go for it again. So that little pattern was what got me started. And to be honest, most of my mushrooms are slightly different to the pattern because I was watching a movie and I was not concentrating half the time. So when I had to do some treble stitches three times into the one chain, I may have only done two. And then I carried around to the top of the little mushroom cap. And then as I headed down here, I'd be sidetracked and did some more stitches or even less stitches. So most of the mushroom caps are a little wonky, which is actually perfect. So I think my first one was this one. And it is as per the pattern. And it is a upside down heart. So that's what this lady has done, Lucy. She has got a pattern for, an ups uh, for a heart and then just turned it upside down. So even if you can't find her blog and the pattern, just Google crocheted heart <clears throat> and make yourself a little <clears throat> upside down heart. And then the stem, she just did some uh, chain stitch to create uh, 10 stitches and then went along the side of it with some double crochets, triple crochets, uh, single crochets around the end and then back um, and finished it off. So in the process, you get a stem. I think she did like two, two laps around that, that stem and then that just gets stitched to the bottom of the mushroom. So that there is pretty much as per the pattern. 
then as the evening went on and I started not really paying too much attention to the pattern because I thought oh, I've got a gist of what she's doing I then started creating some where I would do the double chain on the one side double chain stitch and then come up the opposite side which is the single so that gave it quite a curved shape to the stem which I thought was pretty cool this little um, top is the pattern and it's the smaller version she's got two sizes so there's the little one and the bigger one and that stem definitely is to the pattern where this one isn't because I started doing single chain up that side uh, this one here is probably closer to the pattern because she has um, eight or nine stitches that go into the very end chain so that creates that round fat bottom but then as I said I've changed my style and I did double half crochets up one side and singles up the other side which sort of gave it quite an unusual shape as well so that one there I just seem to get really wrong as you can see it's sort of a bit wonky up this one edge but I don't think it matters because mushrooms you know are what they are so I've made five mushrooms varying sizes and wonkiness in crocheting so they're my first elements that I'm wanting to use so I'm just going to grab my little tray here and put them in here I haven't joined them yet and I've left the threads attached so that <clears throat> I sort of um, can adjust them or stitch them down or use those threads so I'm just going to put them to one side so they're still separated is what I'm trying to say um, the next mushroom I was sort of thinking about is I've seen a few people use Suffolk puffs as a cap so I didn't have any that suited the color that were vintage so I had to sort of make them so I just grabbed some fabrics that were neutral two of them here um, match each other but they're just different colored backgrounds they've got that Corneli sort of design to it and the other one is just uh, similar but sort of not quite the same so I've got three fabrics that are toned together and I used a um, what did I use now I used a, a container a Tupperware container to get my circle so it's just a case of drawing the circle on the fabric with my pen I then cut it out and then with my needle and thread um, and a knot in the end of it went around the edge of the fabric and um, you know gathered it all in cinching it up tight to create my Suffolk puff uh, I then stitched it closed so that it didn't come undone and I then ironed it with a steam iron that helps flatten it and it does help it look like it's a bit more of a vintagey sort of piece otherwise it's quite fluffy now I've seen a few people use them where they turn them up on themselves and stitch them down like that so you had the flat top and the the bottom then has all the little fins in it for the underneath of the uh, mushroom I have seen people do them that way as well so you've got a couple different options of what you can use I like this way this is the third way where the hole and I've deliberately left it a little bit open is um, just exposed at the bottom there so it looks like the mushroom has tilted back and you're looking just from the bottom side of it now because that bits folded underneath it gives a bit of a puffiness to it now in that hole when I was sort of prepping all these fabrics I've got a lot of selvages and it's sort of the rough edge left on the um, fabric so I, I keep them and I started sort of semi folding it on itself like that's one piece folded in half so folded it on itself made it quite messy looking and just sort of popped a few pins in it and I'm thinking that I'm going to stuff that into the top of that cap to make the stalk now not all of these ones I've got here have stalk ideas yet because I'm still sort of mushrooming around as they would say my theory is I create a heap of mushrooms whether I use them all doesn't really matter 
um, I'll, I'm sure they'll pop up somewhere in a future project. So it's just this video is all about as many mushrooms as I can make. So that was a Suffolk puff mushroom with an exposed center to put some fabrics into um, at a later date. Now on all of these mushrooms, I will be embellishing them. Now I'm just grabbing a, a piece of crocheting here. And let's say that little edge was all I had. Let's pretend that's cut off. I would then stitch little random pieces of textile onto these mushrooms just to sort of tizzy them up a little bit. Whether it be a little apron that say the stem has come up and there's this little funny fibrous apron that appears underneath the mushroom. So it's going to be a lot of fun embellishing the mushrooms. But the first step, I believe, is just getting shapes, general, you know, bits and pieces sort of put together. And then we build like we would a scene on our slow stitch. So I'm going to pop this fellow in here. I'm pretty happy with him. He's something somehow he'll come together. This next um, mushroom, there's a lot of mushrooms out there that are... Um, uh, what do they call it? Applique, but soft edged stitched. So that's when they cut a shape and then they turn the fabric over and pin it to whatever they're um, stitching onto and then go around with a little stitch catching that mushroom edge down. Just a tiny little slip. Turned edge applique or soft edge okay so that's another mushroom I'm thinking about puppy dogs are barking that's something so I believe there'll be some of those in the background now they're going to make a very flat shape which I'm really loving because I think this is going to be quite textured especially with these crocheted pieces in amongst it so I've cut myself just the one um, semicircle cap if you will so whether i turn that and stitch it down like i just showed or i will just literally uh, slow stitch over it and pin it down and let it be all textured textured oh goodness me textured oh forget it all rough edged to give it a sort of more of a whimsical look quite possibly and as for the stem i'm still not sure what that stem will be I was playing around with this piece of um, uh, ribbon lace that I had where I turned the edge down and then just gathered it back on itself to create like that apron-y sort of look. So I pretty much uh, turned it back down. I had it all frayed <clears throat> like so. And then um, turned it back down on itself and then pinched it together to stitch it into a, a bit of a shape of a stem. And that could be easily added to something like that one or this guy. Okay, I'm just going to stop the video for a moment because my iPad has um, just given me a message that it's low in power. So I better check into that and I will be back. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm back. My iPad is recharged somewhat. And I've had some chocolates, just a little snack. So I'm back thinking about mushrooms. Now, where was I? I was talking about how I intend to use some of these lace trims to create stems. <clears throat> Whether it's that one or this one, who knows? But at least that's sort of the, the concept, so to speak. A lot of my little trims that I've got around, I plan on adding somewhat to these little guys. Whether it's just across the, the cap that was the doily where I took the center out, the, the pinks and the green roses, and um, then embroidered a heap of these little flowers on um, the piece that was all olive greens, and then the pink flower come out. So I've got this unusual little edge. So I'm hoping to use a little bit of that. It seems a bit mushroomy to me, fibrous. How, I do not know, but anyway, that's in amongst my desk at the moment. And then I've also got just lots of little bits of lace that's come off handkerchiefs and doilies and things like that. So really 
think that this project will use lots of those random things that really, once you sort of know that you're looking at a mushroom, you'll tend to believe that it is a mushroom once you see fibres and things popping up everywhere and crocheted bits off of doilies are going to be perfect because there's this netty sort of look and random shapes that can be added <clears throat> on a stem of a mushroom so it looks like there's fibres coming off of them. When you start Googling images of mushrooms in the wild, or toadstools is another Google word you could search. They have weird shaped stems and then there's this random growths that come off the side. So I think, um, I think it's going to be quite fun to sort of play with these. So where am I now? We've talked about um, the stems, so I'll pop that up to one side. We've spoken about this cap and how it may end up being something. <clears throat> now, this little guy, actually, before I get on to him, this little cap, I was laying this doily down on the mushroom. I thought, well, there's another mushroom, whether it sits on top or it's on its own accord. That doily in its, uh, in its entirety is a mushroom shape that's got potential. So we'll sort of see how that goes as well. So I'm just going to pop that little guy in my tray of potential mushrooms. The This guy here is a combination of a few things. I made, um, I'll just pop that in my tray as well. I made a second uh, Suffolk puff, exactly the same size as the first one that we had just looked at using the uh, Tupperware bowl. Now that Tupperware bowl's diameter is 13 and a half centimetres. So if you did want a similar size Suffolk puff, um, 13 and a half centimetres. Now this little one made out of the pale fabric, he is, um, I've cut him in half. So the first half, because I'd cinched him together and he was nice and tight in the centre, when I cut it, I've broken the stitching that has held him together. So the first thing I had to do when creating this uh, mushroom is I had to re-secure the centre so that it didn't just fall apart. I then turned over the edges of it and stitched them down so they were nice and secure. So pretty much what I did is flipped it over and stitched all in here to make sure that that didn't unravel. Then I just turned the um, edges in just a little bit like so and I stitched them down. I'm not going to do it to this one because I, I want to keep that in its original shape for now because it could become something and because I sort of want to do as many different versions as I can. I'm going to leave him as he is so he is just the cut version but to create this one I did have to re-secure all of this. I turned in these edges so that they were nice and secure. So I'm just going to put this little guy in my tray as a, because I, if I fiddle with him too much, he's actually going to unravel and he's already starting to now. So I'll just leave him alone. <clears throat> so now that this other half is all stitched down and nice and secure, I then get a, got a rectangle of fabric out of this one. Now the measurement I used was eight centimeters by 18 and a half centimeters. So it created a rectangle that was about that wide and pretty much that long. I don't know if I can open that up and see. Oh, there's a pin. That would have been nasty in the hand. No, it's all neat now, so can't really see where it come from, but it was eight centimeters by 18 and a half centimeters. I then gathered the one edge, the long edge of it, gathered it all up and then I turned it under. So now I have a nice folded clean edge and I just eased it around the top of my half yo-yo, the top edge of it and stitched it down with a running stitch. So I'll bring that up to the camera so you can see. You can see how it is folded over, gathered first, then folded under and then stitched on top of the top edge of that yo-yo. So I'm not sure where I'm heading with this yet, but I think it will make uh, quite an interesting mushroom and it probably will be my feature mushroom, mushroom, the one big one on the page. 
So now that that's attached, I then got the edges. So if I undo these pins, and it will show you all of the raw edges. So there's my rectangle basically, but it's starting to be pulled into the side of this mushroom. So now I'm just going to rough pin it just to get those edges tucked under. When it goes onto my background, I can fiddle with it some more to get more of the mushroomy shape. But at the moment, I'm just turning it under and pinning it to sort of give me a bit of a visual of where it might head. <clears throat> I like this guy because not only is the the base looking 3D because it's got that yo-yo tucked in underneath the main cap. We have the opportunity to even potentially stuff this, which is, you know, not real good for a, um, a book. But there's no reason why we couldn't put a little bit of fill in there just to puff it up a little bit. So we'll see how we go. Maybe just with some stitches of some pearls or things in amongst it will sort of make it feel a little textured. I really like the shape I've got there. I'm not loving that shape there. So I'm just going to turn that in just a little bit more while I've noticed something. Might as well just do it and I'll just pin it. <clears throat> so there is my mushroom cap with its little finny bottom here, all stitched, ready to be added to my my piece so that's probably going to be a bit of a feature that guy as for the stem who knows haven't thought that far yet um, another one that I've got here off camera which I don't think I'll use is a second uh, version of the crocheted ones now <clears throat> I use this fine cotton to crochet my original ones and I loved it so I made like five of them but I was sitting there looking at this this is the twine I used in the olive stitcheries where I created the branch and then I used green thread and couched it down to my page. So this was sort of still sitting on my desk. I'm just reaching over and grabbing my book. I used that twine here, there, and then just couched it down with those um, green threads. So as it was still sort of sitting there, I decided I'd find a bigger crochet hook I think I jumped up to a five or a five and a half this one I used a three and a half sized crochet hook so if you did want to do some crocheting that's what I used on that one and I crocheted another mushroom using that um, pattern where it's an upside down heart and then the stem and I'm not a lover of it I can't decide but I've got him made. He may appear in something else. He may just need some textiles and fibres added that will sort of break him up a little bit. He just feels harsh to me at the moment. So I'm sort of not sure where this um, big guy will go, if at all. The other thing too is he's getting really thick. So I need to be a little bit mindful that I only have so much room in my journal. It's so easy to get so Texted and texted. There's that word again. Just I'm going to skip it. See the thickness there? Then if you look at my fingernail to the thickness of it, it's you know quite chunky. But who knows? That might appear somewhere. But at the moment, yeah, not so much loving him. But we'll see. Um, what else did I want to go through before I leave it at that mushroom chat? I'm just going to grab my little tray of mushrooms. I think that's enough examples got this sort of puffy um, applique one. <clears throat> I've got some lay, um, some doilies that potentially have that shape. I've got just a moon cut here, a half moon cap. So that's got potential. This Suffolk puff was the turned over one. So he's looking definitely something. And I love how that stem's coming together. I've then got this little guy here. Whether I make some more... Uh, Suffolk puffs that maybe are a little bit smaller. I did bring into the room this morning this glass. Now its measurement across the diameter is only eight centimeters, where that container was um, 13 and a half centimeters. So maybe I do some smaller Suffolk puffs in that fabric. 
Um, and then I've got my little crocheted ones. Actually, while I, I've had that thought of the smaller, I'm going to just grab the fabric that matches that half guy, which is, yep, that one. And I'm just gonna quickly draw <clears throat> a circle using that um, glass because I have all these random ideas. They pop into my head and then, um, then they're gone. So if I don't slow down a little and just quickly do at least something that prompts me. So if I don't get back to the project for a day or so, at least I know where my train of thought's been. We'll do two because it's interesting little size, this one. So there's heaps of videos about Suffolk Puffs, or if you're an Aussie, we call them yo-yos here, but everyone else seems to call them Suffolk Puffs. I've got a heap of vintage ones in a very old quilt that I um, purchased online, and oh, it's a beauty, and the lady was just pleased to see it out of the house. So I was like, wow, look at the fabrics in this thing. So I do have hundreds and hundreds of yo-yos. But um, none of them really suited the colour scheme I wanted to do. So I thought, oh well, I'll just have to make some. They're very um, primary colours and it sort of is not where this journal seems to be going. So I want to try and keep it a similar tone about the book. <clears throat> so I'm just going to trim around this yo-yo. This yo-yo might be too small for a a mushroom who knows but we'll get him made and then um, if I don't use them it doesn't matter because it sort of just builds up supplies and they might pop up on a, a stitchery down the track because you know it's just a random piece that can be easily added to a slow stitch piece okay that's this pen I use is just one of those fabric pens that you apply heat and um, it disappears the ink so I'm now just going to quickly stitch this as you can see they're really really easy to make <clears throat> so if you can't find them online to buy some real old ones just make some and if you give them an iron once they're created um, it'll ensure that they have that aged look because they'll be really flat and have some good creases so I'm just doing a couple little stitches on the spot because when you go to gather it, you don't want this to pull through so that you're pretty much not gathering anything. It'll just fall to bits. Am I on camera? Yeah. So I'm just whipping around the outer edge with a running stitch over and under. Doesn't take long. I'll have to go looking for some more mushroom ideas, but I probably do have enough. My page isn't too big, but by the time you start layering things, you sort of, you need plenty of goodies to sort of have it your hands ready to go. The other beautiful thing about these mushrooms is I like the idea of using lots of pearls and beads on them. So this page I think is going to end up quite glamorous for a bunch of mushrooms. <clears throat> so I am looking forward to, to that, the beading side of it. Um, another point I wanted to mention is because this page is a flip out page, a folding out page from the cover, I have a crease on my background, which is there. That tells me that that's the folding point. So I need to be very careful about any mushrooms I put in this zone. I certainly don't want any over that fold because they're just going to make it really bulky and the page won't at least lie flat on itself. So I'm going to have to make sure that there's some um, air there, so to speak. The other type of mushroom that I thought of doing as well is just couching on uh, the outline of some mushrooms in the very background. So my theory there is I'll uh, lay down the fabrics for the background. I'm not going to do a lot of stitching on them. I'll probably just rough patchwork them in so that they're sort of there but in the distance <clears throat> and not a major feature because I think there'll be enough going on with all these mushrooms. Then um, then I've lost my train of thought. 
so the background will go on. Then I might sketch some mushrooms in, maybe some really big ones. So they'll help fill up the top of my piece. And then I'll start applying all of these embellished mushrooms in whatever form they sort of come. So I'm just gathering that in. <clears throat> and I might just leave that a little bit loose because I do like the idea of the stalk disappearing into the mushroom. So I'm not going to pull it too tight and I'm just going to pop a couple little extra stitches here just to secure that gathering so that it doesn't come undone on me when I start, you know, forcing stem-like materials into the yo-yo. Okay, so there's the centre of the yo-yo and I'm going to just move it down a little bit that center so oh yeah he's going to be cute <clears throat> and we could even pinch it in a little bit so he's like a tall little toad still once we start embroidering him on and then let's say he's got a stalk coming up into the center of him yeah oh He's going to be cute. You're probably looking at screen going, what is she doing? I cannot make heads or tails of this girl's brain at the moment. But I think it's going to come together. Look, it's needle and thread. How wrong can we go? Paint's a lot more permanent. But threads, we can do all sorts. So he'll make a great little mushy coming up. I may even have to make some small ones. That'll be a bit of fun. So this little guy has definitely got potential and how he turns into a mushroom, we will see. So I'm just going to pin him to that second one so we know that they're part of it and grab my tray of mushrooms and just pop that in as well. So I've got lots and lots of bits and pieces that are going to become something somehow. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to mention, oh, we were talking about the background and how I may need some couched mushrooms so sort of i don't know maybe some real tall things i will be covering over this so it's not really going to matter what i draw here now because there's be so much so much um mushroom activity going on who knows where these stitched ones or couched ones will go so I can do all sorts of things, you know, they'll have funny little tops on them and, you know, who knows how they'll be decorated up, whether that becomes something. But I'm thinking that once I get my background down, using things like this rope, I'll couch some mushrooms in onto the background. That makes sense? So this rope will be used sort of get my shape and then stitching it down with another thread just whipping over that uh, cordage will hold it into place and give us these subtle mushrooms in behind all of this other mushroom activity does that make sense I'll grab this little cap so if he was in here somewhere these guys would be poking up behind so that's the plan now as for the background let's have a little look at that so we're starting to build elements that we can use when we're ready to sort of start literally painting our picture of mushrooms. Oh, the other thing we need to think about too is the, the ground. Somewhere where everything is coming out of. Now the forest floor in my mind is a bit messy. So as I've been making things and tearing off fabrics for these yo-yos and things, I've just been putting them into a little pile. And my, my thought is at this stage is just laying down lots of these strips and the more ratty and messy they are and scrunched up and looking layered and I'll put some cheesecloth through too that little netty stuff so it sort of starts to look like rubbish on the bottom of the forest floor so my floor is going to be very very messy with scraps of fabrics from all of these mushrooms. 
And then in amongst all of that, I can do some beads and some French knots and things like that. And that's going to give me the floor to my piece. Then I'll have my mushrooms coming out of it. But before any of that happens, any of it, I need to get a background down because I've just got basic calico and we can't have that. So I've got a little pack of fabric here that I've picked up, I believe, from Rachel. So I want to get into this. Look, see, there's some cordage there that's come from Rachel and her packaging. So I will put that to one size and maybe we use a bit of that for our background couched mushrooms. So let me just move all my bits out of the way on the side here. <clears throat> and let's just start laying down some fabrics to give us a bit of a background. I love that because it's dark and if everything's going to be quite light it'll sort of just break up the background a bit. That's a piece of hemp. Might just pop that there. What else is in this pack? Looks like the rest of it's just all hemp, similar hemps. That one there feels like a, a bit of a blanket or something. It's got a different feel about it. Yep, so I'm going to cut. Let me grab some bigger scissors than those little ones. <clears throat> I'm just going to cut. I'm making the pieces reasonably big, I think, for this background. Because if it's too busy with lots of little bits, it might look a bit odd that it's um, bitsy. So I'm thinking I need to keep things pretty chunky. So that's my theory. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I don't think there's much else in that pack I can use because they're all similar tones. So I'm just looking to one side. Oh, I've got a bit of this. A bit of this left. That'd be nice, but it might be getting too thick. I probably need to unpick the layers so that I can use this top bit that's all embroidered, but then I'll lose the pretty embroidery. I won't use that because I think it's going to be such a bulky piece anyway to have um, to have more of that. I like that piece. <clears throat> to have thickness there is the last thing I probably need because it's just going to be pretty thick as it is. So there's another piece of linen. So I've just popped that there. I think by having these different colours, which are still a bit mushroomy on it, will help everything sort of pop a bit. I'm just going to pin that because it's a bit curled up due to being folded up in a, my little sewing box. <clears throat> so I'm still looking for nice big pieces, darkish tones, and um, building up my background, ready for all of the mushrooms. I've got a stripe there. I hope it's not going to be too covered because it's such a pretty piece by a mushroom, but maybe I can sort of work around it so that it's not covered or maybe I move the piece over a little bit but we'll see see how it goes so I need something through the bottom here I'm just rummaging through my little book box of tricks that's more calico it's in the wrong box where else we got I do have some green do we want a bit of green in here just to sort of denote that there is a forest floor Let's do it because it's still in the tones but what it might do is allow me to add a little green into into the piece which is always nice do we want that over that yep that's better and I think I may have already said this, but when I stitch this down, I'll probably just go around the outer edges of everything and keep it quite simple. I just need another little piece down here. It probably doesn't need to be anything 
spectacular because um, it will be covered with, um, that's too white, covered with, you know, bits of the forest floor. What have I got here? This is a little box from previous projects. Mustard? No, it doesn't look right, does it? What else have we got in here? They're probably little, too little. Let's see if this. Oh, see that edge there? That'd be good on the bottom of the mushroom. I'm just going to cut that off and add it to my table of scraps that are around me. So when I start decorating these mushrooms, things like that, I think might be quite handy to have. So I'll just pop that napkin back. I still haven't found a perfect piece. <clears throat> keep looking, keep looking, keep rummaging. There's another stripe. I don't mind that. It will be covered, so maybe it's too good to use. Oh no, let's use it like it's Hordesville. That's Rachel's favourite saying. I totally get it, but especially when it's textiles from overseas. In Australia, our country's just not old enough to really have a lot of really cool fabrics. We've got to go hunting abroad and then freight. Oh, goodness. Postage is just shocking now. So I don't mind that. Um, just a little piece here. What have I got? Something random and small. Oh, I've got a bit of seeded calico, which has a bit more texture in it. So I'm going to add that. It will be covered down there anyway because um, the forest floor will be developing in that zone. So I might even just fold that up. So it's the start of, can you see that? That piece was a little bit big, so I'm just going to fold it up and pin it down because it can just start building the texture that's going to be happening down there anyway. And if I do decide to chop it off, well, you know, that can happen too. All right. So I've got the background laid down. I'm just going to have a quick little tidy up here so that I don't knock everything to the floor especially my bucket of overseas bits and pieces. So uh, as I said, I'm going to keep the stitching pretty simple. So I'll just do a few lines here and there. I'm just going to outline each of the patches as if I'm just repairing this piece of fabric with lots of patches. And it'll just be a running stitch. And around we go and everything will, you know, be secure. So it'll be just some thread and I'll use a really coarse thread I think. I've got some linen thread in a box somewhere that I haven't used yet. And it's like very fine linen that's been twisted to make into a thread so I might even use that and that'll give us a real organic feel about the piece as well. Okay so the only other thing I really need to keep in mind is where that fold is. You can see it there so I do need to make sure that, for example, that there is not on a fold, which it's not, which is good. I might just finger press that a little bit so I don't forget about it. And there's our fold. So that's perfect. That's sitting just before it, so that's not going to make it bulky. So that little piece is fine. Okay. That's looking good. All right, everyone, I'm going to stop the video here. This will be um, part A, I believe. Um, what I'm going to do next is stitch this down, then going to start building my um, floor out of these bits and then add my mushrooms. I'll sketch some in. I'll couch some of them. 
So when I come back with the next lot of videos, it'll be just the different stages I went through and the learnings and what, what I figured out and what I didn't want to do. So at the moment, at least you know where I'm heading. I'm going to continue researching mushrooms and see if there's anything now I can find that will help me decorate these mushrooms so that as they start to come into the piece, you know, where will they sit and um, how will they look? And then the embellishing of them with beads and trims and all sorts. So, okay, I'll stop waffling. That's it for part A of my mushroom slow stitch piece for my Roxy Journal of Stitchery. Thanks, everyone. Oh, in the description, I will put the... The website where I found the crocheted pieces from um, that particular lady. So if you did want to add some crocheted elements to your piece or learn how to crochet, that's where I got my pattern. So they'll be in amongst it as well. Okay, everyone, check the description for that. So don't forget to hit the like button and the notification button if you have already subscribed so that when part B turns up, you'll um, get a, a little nudge from your phone or ipad to say that it's now available to view because it might be in a, a week or so's time okay everyone see you all soon bye